Russell Hoban, the American children's writer, said in 1985, Language is an archaeological vehicle full of the remnants of dead and living pasts, lost and buried civilizations and technologies. The language we speak is a whole palimpsest of human effort and history. Palimpsest is a beautiful metaphor for language. In Greek, it means scraped again or re-scratched, and it refers to a text written on top of another text. Of course, the historian is more interested in the original inscription. A language is multi-layered. It encodes the heritage and the culture of a people across history and even prehistory. But unfortunately, linguicide, or language killing, and glottophagy, or language eating, have made our world an unlucky place. These twin forces have been in operation in Australia, for example, since the early colonial period, when efforts were made to prevent Aboriginal people from continuing to speak their languages in order to civilize them. Anthony Forster, a South Australian 19th century financier and politician, gave voice to a colonial linguicide ideology which was typical of much of the attitude towards Australian languages. This is what he said on 8 September 1843, and I remember it exactly. The natives would be sooner civilized if their language was extinct. The children taught would afterwards mix only with whites, where their own language would be of no use. The use of their language would preserve their prejudices and debasement, and their language was not sufficient to express the ideas of civilized life." End of quote. Even Governor of South Australia George Gray, who was relatively pro-Aboriginal, appeared to share this opinion and remarked in his journal in 1841 that the ruder languages disappear successively and the tongue of England alone is heard around. What was seen as a civilizing process was actually the traumatic death of various fascinating and multifaceted, grammatically complex and linguistically beautiful Aboriginal languages. It is not surprising, therefore, that of approximately 330 known Aboriginal languages, today only 13, 4%, are spoken natively by all children. Blatant statements of linguistic imperialism, such as the ones made by Forster and Gray, now seem to be less frequent, but the processes they described are nonetheless still active. Approximately 7,000 languages are currently spoken worldwide. The majority of these are spoken by small populations. Approximately 96% of the world's population speaks around 4% of the world's languages, leaving the vast majority of tongues vulnerable to extinction and disempowering their speakers, even though it is the percentage of speakers within a certain tribe that matters more than the number of speakers. Linguistic diversity reflects many things beyond accidental historical splits. Languages are essential building blocks of community identity and authority. However, with globalization of dominant cultures, cultures at the periphery will be marginalized, and this would lead to language loss. Language reclamation will become increasingly relevant as people seek to recover their cultural autonomy, empower their spiritual and intellectual sovereignty, and improve their well-being. In fact, language reclamation increases feelings of well-being and pride amongst disempowered people who fall between the cracks, feeling that they are neither white fellas nor in command of their own Aboriginal heritage. My friend Joshua Fishman, I usually called him in Yiddish Shikl, passed away in 2015. This is what he said. The real question of modern life and for reversing language shift is how one can build a home that one can still call one's own, and by cultivating it, find community, comfort, companionship, and meaning in a world whose mainstreams are increasingly unable to provide these basic ingredients for their own members." End of quote. Australia's languages have not just been dying of their own accord. Many were destroyed by settlers of this land. Even in the 20th century, many Aboriginal kids were taken out of their homes, creating many stolen generations. Imagine you're playing on your playground and suddenly a black car with two strangers arrives. 
these strangers come and take you out of your playground, put you in the car and drive you away from your mother. And these strangers tell you, you cannot speak the language that you spoke to your mother anymore. You cannot express yourself using the expressions that you used with your mother. You cannot express yourself in the language that shaped you, that made you what you are, that shaped your human soul, that shaped your emotions, values. You are not allowed to speak English. Imagine just that. Just imagine this happening to you. We owe it to the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people to support the empowerment and reclamation of their cultural heritage, in this instance, through language revival. To quote Nelson Mandela, if you talk to a man in a language he understands, that goes to his head. If you talk to him in his language, that goes to his heart. According to the international law of human rights, persons belonging to ethnic religious linguistic minorities have the right to use their own language. Thus, every person has the right to express themselves in the language of their ancestors, not just in the language of convenience or in the international lingua franca, language of communication, that English has become. Through supporting language revival, we can appreciate the significance of indigenous languages and recognize their importance to indigenous Australian people in particular and to Australia in general. We can then right some small part of the wrong against the original inhabitants of Australia and support the wishes of their ancestors with the help of linguistic and revivalistic knowledge. Native title is a legal recognition by Australian law that some indigenous people have existing and continuing rights to and interests in their land that come from their traditional laws and customs. After the recognition of native title, the government cannot extinguish the rights of Aboriginal people to their land without compensation. Compensation in relation to native title generally arises when groups have successfully claimed native title and then negotiate positive economic terms with mining companies and others who want to take over these lands. I believe that even more important than native title is what I call native tongue title. The Australian government ought to compensate indigenous people not only for the loss of tangible land, but also for the loss of intangible lang or language. Legislation to compensate for linguicide, language killing, will recognize the indigenous people's rights to revive or maintain their languages. The compensation money ought to be used to support reclamation activities and linguistic empowerment efforts. Such morally justified legislation would help reinstate indigenous people's authority and ownership of their cultural heritage. So far, we have discussed the moral essence of language revival. Let us now move from ethics to aesthetics, from the right to the beautiful. 